Howdy there. So last night, I saw X-Men First Class, and I really enjoyed it. I think I'm going to give it an 8. Though right off the bat, I feel I should tell you, uh, part of me wants to give it a 9. You know, uh, I feel like I'm being a bit of a grump for not giving it a 9. But I think I'll justify my 8 throughout this, hopefully. Um, it's about the origin of the X-Men. Um, it's from Marvel Studios. It tries to follow the uh, Marvel format. Uh, and it's about the formation of the X-Men. Um, most notably, the friendship uh, between Charles Xavier and Eric Leishner. Um, Professor X and Magneto, uh, and the events that would make them become Professor X and Magneto, and diametrically opposed um, arch nemesis than uh, good friends and brothers that we see here. Um, it also is set against the backdrop of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, turns out, uh, the C Cuban Missile Crisis was all a uh, direct result of a mutant plot against humankind and was thankfully thwarted uh, by the X-Men. So, thanks for that. Uh, it's uh, directed by Matthew Vaughn. I'm not uh, remembering... Matthew Vaughn's other stuff. I want to say he did Kick-Ass. Am I right about that? I think he did Kick-Ass, which is really good. Uh, it was written by several people. Um, I want to say four or five different people. Um, produced by several different people, but I did notice that Brian Singer was one of the producers, which made me happy. Uh, it really fits in with the first two. Uh, I had very low expectations for this because I pretty much consider this X-Men 5. Uh, it's the fifth film of the franchise. And I thought the third one was not good. Uh, X-Men United, uh, not a good movie. And then I thought uh, Wolverine Origins uh, was awful. Um, so... You know, when the third of something is not good and the fourth of something is awful, your hopes for the fifth aren't going to be too extremely high. And that was my case. Um, no high hopes at all. And I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, again, it fits in very nicely, at least with the first two. I think X-Men 2 is my favorite. I have a feeling that I'm going to be re-watching them soon. Uh... And I think I still like X-Men 2 more, um, but this is definitely on par with the first one. Uh, fits in very nicely in tone, uh, uh, mood, uh, even cinematography, color, you know, costumes. They, at least for the first three, all seem to meld quite nicely. Or, now I'm saying first three, this is a prequel to the first one, uh, though it comes after. Um, this film even starts with, uh, I think the first scene of the first film. So, again, uh, fits nicely. Um, and it's probably just as good as the first one. I, I still think I like number two a little bit more. Though I'm gonna have to watch it soon to find out. Uh, reason I'm not giving it a higher score than an eight, again, I still am divided. I think I should maybe give it a nine. Um, because of its outstanding technical achievements. Uh, and it's just overall quality. But as soon as I got home, my roommate asked me, you know, what movie did you see? I said, X-Men. What'd you think of said movie? Uh, I said, I liked it. It's not as good as Thor, but I liked it. I mean, that was an initial gut reaction. Um, just coming home from the theater. I liked it, but not as much as Thor. You know, I, I still, I had a very fun time at Thor. I thought Thor was great entertainment. A fun time. And I gave Thor an 8. 
So if I think Thor was better, I can't, you know, and I'm definitely solid about that eight with Thor. Uh, so I can't give X-Men first class something higher if I, you know, enjoyed Thor more. Um, I thought maybe the film uh, took itself slightly too seriously. Uh, I enjoyed um, how Thor was so out there and very comic booky. Here with X Men, we have it, you know, tied to the real world, and I enjoy that, especially with mutants. They they don't have to follow into uh, fall into like human the human world. Uh, they can be outside of that, and they are. Uh, but still, it's like connecting it with this reality, um, the Cuban Missile Crisis, which, again, was cool. Uh, but, again, uh, I think that's why I like Thor more. Um, the film took itself maybe just a, a tad too seriously. Uh, there, you know, was some humor in there. Uh, just, you know, a couple spatterings of humor. Um... But I found myself laughing uh, at what I would just call cheese. You know, sometimes it got cheesy. Um, and I would just have to giggle. You know, whether it would, might be just random little bits of bad acting or uh, something ridiculous someone might have said. Uh, just cheese. It didn't escape that cheese where maybe Thor embraced the cheese and was charming. Uh, here, X-Men was maybe slightly pompous, and when it came off with cheese, it just, like, made it far more noticeable. Uh, all the acting's great. Um, let's see, Jennifer Lawrence is in it, James McAvoy, um, Oliver Platt, Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon is great. He's probably the highlight of the film for me. He's the bad guy, Sebastian Shaw, um... He's very good. I, I was like, wow, it's Kevin Bacon. Um, and I was like, oh man, how long is he going to be in this? And it turns out for like the whole movie. So good stuff. Glad for Kevin Bacon. Uh, he's very good here. Um, let's see, who else is in it? I want to say Michael Fassbender. Um, no, I'm not sure about that name. I think he played Magneto. Uh, let's see, who else is in it? Did I say Oliver Platt? It's always good to see Oliver Platt. I'll take Oliver Platt any day. Um, well, it, it had a big cast. It had a big cast. Lots of character actors. Um, the guy from Scanners is in there. You know, that's always good to see him. Um, Michael Ironsides, I believe his name is. Uh, outstanding. I mean, very well directed. Uh, looked gorgeous. Special effects uh, were out. I mean. You can't even talk about it anymore. Special effects these days are just turning out to be amazing all the time. Uh, the costume design was really cool. Um, again, technically, I can't really find much wrong with it. Uh, or anything to nitpick. I, I just... The things that, that turned me off about it, and it didn't really turn me off, was the attitudes. Um, just, again, this sense of uh, importance... Um, it didn't want to have as much fun, you know, it, it's taken itself seriously. And just for my taste, you know, this is a comic book movie and it should be a little fun. There are all, uh, uh, some cameos, I don't want to go into it, um, that are awesome. Uh, they make up for there being nothing at the end of the credits, uh, which uh, a lot of the people, I would say half the theater, um, and it was sold out. Half the theater stayed behind to see what was after the credits, and there was nothing. And people booed, you know. Uh, someone said, Fox sucks. Uh, but at the end of the film, you know, the end, big round of applause. Big round of applause. But, you know, there was a big round of applause at the end of Thor the first time I watched it, too. So, um... A lot of movies have been getting a lot of applause these days. Uh, but there was a big amount of applause at the end of this film. Um, no walkouts. Uh, you know. Maybe it was... Uh, 
I heard before going in, the only opinion I heard that it was good, but it was long. And maybe it was a little long. I was definitely sold by the story. I was into the story. Uh, so I didn't really notice the length too much. Um, so, I mean, even less than Dark Knight. You know, even Dark Knight, I was like, man, this is, you know, stretching on a bit. But not here. Uh, and I, you know, I love Dark Knight. Um, I don't know what else to say. Uh, all the acting was great. I really liked seeing um, what I would call, I don't know, comic book mo There was iconic uh, imagery um, that were taken from the comic books. I really liked the way the characters looked, how they used their powers, um, especially Magneto. Uh, it always kind of irritated me the way that Ian McKellen used his powers in, uh, in the first two. Um, here, I thought it was much more like it is in the comic books. Uh, you know, just concentrating, you know, holding your hand out, whatever, and making it happen. Where Ian McCallum was just like throwing his arms everywhere. And, you know, I just didn't think that was... I didn't think someone with magnetic powers would have to throw their arms everywhere. I think they could just think about it, you know, and it would happen. Um, yeah, that's just a nitpicky geek thing, I'm sure. Um, but I really, I really enjoyed the film. I thought, uh, the relationship between all the characters seemed, you know, real. Uh, I, I, you know, it was totally believable. It was totally believable for being, you know, a comic book movie. Um, you know, it succeeded at bringing it into the real world and making it, giving it that real world feel. Uh, again, it just... Maybe it was too good at that, you know? It, uh, just the attitude again. The attitude. Uh, it could have had more fun. You know, it could have had more fun. Because when it did have fun, I liked it better. Um, but it was just so damn serious. Uh, I mean, I really liked it. Uh, I think it's highly. I am, I'm left without the desire to see it again. I mean, I think I got it. Uh, where, again, after Thor, I was like, oh, man, I got to see that again. Um, I don't get that here. You know, I was like, all right, that was really good. I'm glad I saw it. Uh, but, again, no no burning desire to see it again. Uh, so, you know, I think that's fair. I think 8 is a, is a good score for X-Men First Class. Uh, it's all about all I got to say, really. All right, thanks.